All right, everybody. So the title of this video is how to avoid the crowds on cruise ships. It really could have a subtitle called the introverted's guide to cruising. If you think about cruising, uh, it conjures up people at the pool deck, people in the nightclub, people, people everywhere, people. And if you're an extrovert, if you like to meet strangers, if you like to hang out in crowds, then I would say the cruise ship is definitely a place for you. But what does that do for the poor shy guy? What does that do for the introvert? We're gonna talk about how to avoid the crowds on the cruise in today's video. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? This is Tony with La Lita Loca. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If you're brand new here and you like to get cruise tips, consider subscribing with the notification bell on so you don't miss any of our content. So I'm not really trying to make this video an extrovert versus introvert kind of deal. Uh, there are definitely times that the extrovert wants to avoid the crowd. So it's really going to be about avoiding the crowd on the cruise ship. But I just wanted to let my uh, shy brethren out there know that you could go cruising and not be completely overwhelmed with interacting with people and having people around you all the time. So let's get into the tips. All right, tip number one for avoiding the crowd, you've got to explore the ship. You have to do some recon. You can either do it virtually before you cruise by studying uh, what's on the ship on the cruise website or watching vlogs or watching ship tours on YouTube, but you want to get a good idea of what are some of the kind of things that are available on the cruise ship. I would focus specifically on uh, food places. How many buffets do they have? What's considered the main buffet? What are some other included food options? Where is that located on the cruise ship? If you have some of that basic knowledge going on to the cruise ship, you will be able to maybe avoid the crowd because you're going to have some idea of where the crowd might congregate at key times during the cruise. Case in point, one of the most congested places on embarkation day is the main buffet. So if you know that most people are going to jump on the cruise ship and go to the main buffet, if you've done some research in advance and found another included food option that will be open on embarkation day, you're most likely to avoid that big buffet crowd. And if you can avoid it altogether, it's gonna be good for you if you're not crowd inclined. Speaking of embarkation day, uh, there could be a big crowd trying to check into the cruise ship. So another tip, and this one's gonna cost you money, is to pay for priority boarding. If there's a program like Faster the Fun or like The Key on Royal Caribbean where you can skip some of the line, avoid some of the crowd, it might be worth it to you to pay a little extra money to do so. And once you're on the ship, continue uh, kind of with that recon, see where the main pool is, see where the main bar is, see where all the main things are, and then also figure out where the alternatives are, because that way you can go to the alternatives instead of the main thing and avoid the crowd. A good example, again, is the buffet. The main buffet is always going to be crowded, but like when we were on the Oasis of the Seas, there were three buffets. So there was a main buffet, there was a less crowded buffet, and then there was an even smaller, less crowded buffet than that. Once we figured that out, we were able to just sneak in and out for breakfast without dealing with a huge crowd. But I hear you, what if you like the main things? What if you like the best bar? What if you like the best buffet? What if you like the best pool? What's some ways that you can uh, go and enjoy those things without the crowd? Well, I like to use a little technique called time shifting. You know that the busy time at the buffet is between seven and eight. Uh, go at six o'clock, right when it opens. There's not a lot of people there. If you know it's gonna close at 11, don't go right at 11. A lot of people might be making that move. So sometime between that eight o'clock peak period and 11, maybe uh, you know 9.30 to 10 is the sweet spot where there's not a lot of people. Again, time shift to avoid the crowd if, if you want to avoid the crowd. Of course, this all sounds like a little bit of an extra work, but if you are somebody that has those tendencies where you don't like the huge crowd, you'll invest the time. Uh, this might sound weird to people that don't have these kind of proclivities, but this is, this is the technique that I use. Those are really the biggest tips for me is I try to understand where the crowd's going to be. I try to understand what time the crowd's going to be there, and I either find an alternative spot to go to or I find an alternative time where the crowd is more manageable for me. But there are some other things that you can do if you want to avoid the crowd. Uh, some of them cost, some of them are for free. One of the easiest ones is to book a balcony. Now that's going to be a little more expensive if you're used to cruising in an interior or an ocean view. 
but the balcony is one of the coolest places if you don't want to crowd at all and you still want to enjoy the sea you have a, you have a ledge right there that you can go sit on and get all of your sea time in without having to deal with another person if you don't want to so it costs a little more but a great way for the introvert to cruise a great way to avoid the crowd is to have a balcony this is a tip I really like. There's a couple spots on the cruise ship that never seem busy. Uh, the first one is the library. Of course, you can go in there and play games. You probably should be quiet out of respect if there's other people in there, but it's a nice place to go that's usually not crowded where you can go get some chill time. And this one I like a lot. Go during the day to a club that's really happening at night. Go sit in the disco, go sit where they have karaoke. Usually you're only going to encounter maybe people that are tidying up the place, that are cleaning up the place. But for the most part, that happens in the middle of the night. And those places are just there sitting quiet, sometimes darkened, where you can just go and relax. Another location I like to find is one of the lower decks where there's not a lot of people hanging out. For me, it's great because most of the time it's covered and I'm not gonna get sunburnt. And then again, I can sit outside and enjoy uh, the ocean, enjoy the sea view without being in a huge crowd. It's a nice place to take some downtime. The pools in the pool deck can be tricky, especially on sea days, they're usually packed out, but you'll find that there's usually one or two spots, uh, maybe an alternate smaller pool that has less people there. And then that's another place where I like the time shift. If I've got any time dining, and I know most people are gonna start getting ready for that early dinner by you know five o'clock, six o'clock, you'll start to see the pool decks thin out. Again, you can go get a couple hours in the sun in the late afternoon, usually with less crowd if you plan the timing right. Another one that you can do that's gonna cost you a little extra money is book time in the spa. Uh, get a spa treatment, get a massage, or even just do a spa day pass. There's a lot of things that you can do in the spa. There's gonna be saunas and whirlpools. And the fact that you have to pay to get in there uh, by default means that there's gonna be less of a crowd. So if you wanna find some chill time by yourself or with just a small group of people, uh, book a day pass at the spa. Maybe book a cabin that, that gets you the spa the whole week. It's worth the money if it's one of those circumstances where you don't wanna be a part of the crowd. Another one that, that really does cost a lot of coin that I don't think that we would ever do is uh, a lot of these cruise lines have uh, cruises within the cruise. So these are elevated cruising experiences where you pay a lot more to have your own section of the ship. I'm thinking about the Yacht Club on the MSC cruise lines. Uh, I'm thinking about the Haven experience on the uh, NCL cruise lines. You can pay a lot more money and really become a cruise within a cruise. You'll have your own amenities, your own restaurants, and it's really just a small subset. Again, that's probably out of my price range, but I know for some people that want that kind of uh, set apart experience, uh, you can spend your money and get that. Probably my favorite way to avoid the crowd, and I know this will be controversial because uh, people have strong feelings about it, uh, I like to skip a port day. It is by far the least crowd on the cruise ship because a lot of people, and rightfully so, pay their money, they pay their port fees, and they want to get off and explore the port. Uh, I love the cruise ship. I love that cruise life on the ship. So I like to spend a day where the cruise ship is virtually empty, where everybody is out enjoying the port, and uh, I get to run to the place. Now, there's a lot of people that do it. You're not going to be on a completely empty cruise ship, but it is a good way to have a fairly low crowd experience on a cruise ship when everybody else is off port. Again, I use that time shifting technique. I kind of know when people are getting off, so I'll go eat my breakfast after that. I know when people start to come back on, I might sneak in some food before that just to avoid the crowd. And I guess you could make the argument that don't go on a mega ship with thousands of people, go on a smaller ship. But I like to use these techniques because I like I like the bigger ships. Like I don't want to be shorted on my amenities. Uh, I tell you what, if I was worried about the 6,000 people that were on the Oasis of the Seas, I would have never gone because of the crowd. But I was more interested in all the cool things that that ship had to offer from the elevated entertainment to the multiple food choices, just to the beautiful open layout of that ship. And so I wanted to use these techniques to manage the crowd so I wouldn't be overwhelmed by it instead of uh, just settling for a smaller ship. So you don't have to settle for a small ship. You can come up with some techniques to avoid the crowd and then that way you don't have to miss out on a really cool experience just because you're worried about the amount of people that you're sharing it with. All right, well, those are some tips on how to avoid the crowd on the cruise ship. I know there's a lot of extroverted people out there that this is probably making you scratch your head like, 
don't even go on a cruise then. But really, I mean, we live in a world with diverse people that have diverse approaches to life. And I think cruising is there for everybody. And so uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to enjoy it as an extrovert, to enjoy it as an introvert. And hopefully these are some techniques that will help you when you want to avoid the crowds. The question for the comments is this, what do you do to avoid the crowd or do you not even care about the crowd? Everybody get to the love here. Leave a comment below. We are in the middle of our tip series. This is day 24. Seven more of these until we go on our cruise on the Carnival Breeze. We're giving away a Carnival Breeze prize pack to people that participate in the comments. Uh, so leave your comment, leave your tip below and uh, get entered in for the prize pack. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Make sure you check out all of our social media. Uh, consider subscribing. And if this was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Again, this is Tony with La Lita Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Unless I'm time shifting. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll see you. Bye.